Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the walking tour today. My name is David and I'll be your tour guide for the next roughly two to two and a half hours going around the beautiful old town of Edinburgh. Now as you can tell, I don't sound very Scottish. Now who here can actually guess what my accent is? Australia. 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 I got yes. my two degrees. The first in performing arts acting, and the second in criminology and forensic science. Now I had a choice. Do I be an actor or a detective? And I thought, you know what? I'll be a tour guide. <laughs> Harry Potter fans. Oh, there's a few of you. Alright. I just want to point out J.K. Rowling's hands right here. Small handprints, but did a lot of good work. <laughs> but now follow me just a bit further up. Some of the Harry Potter fans to catch up. <laughs> now just to let you know, this will be one of the longer stops on our tour, because I do need to give you guys just a bit of a backstory about Scotland and Edinburgh itself. Also, throughout this tour, if you guys got any questions, you can put your hand up and ask, or as we're going around, you can come up and talk to me. I'm more than happy to answer questions, because I'm going to try to get a five-hour tour into two hours. The old town of Edinburgh is built on an extinct volcano crag. Up at the very top is the castle, and all the way down the end of the crag is Holyrood Palace. Now there's one mile and 107 yards between the castle and the palace. The Scots like to be bigger than the English, so they call that a Scottish Mile. But nowadays we call it the Royal Mile. Now going all the way back to the uh, 4th century, there were four major tribes here in Scotland. The first were the native Picts. Now, they were called the Picts because they used to fight the Romans naked with blue pitchers all over their bodies. Then came the Scots, who came across from Ireland. They had dark brown hair. Then came the Norse, the Vikings. They came into the Highlands with blonde hair. They start their war with the Scots, and as the war's going on, all these red-haired babies start popping up. Because yeah. so if you get a dark-haired Scot and a fair-haired Norwegian, and you put them together, you get a red-haired. Mm. Now, has anyone seen the movie Braveheart here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite a few of you. That is one inaccurate movie, but <laughs> they did bring a lot of uh, tourism here to Scotland. <laughs> People tend to forget that when a soldier dies on the battlefield, they leave behind a grieving family. Now, Stalin said it best, if I murdered one man, it's a tragedy. But I can send a million men to die in a war, and it's just a statistic. Now, there is a great Scottish song which sums up some of the perils of war, and I will attempt to sing you one verse of it, though my singing voice is terrible. It's about two Scottish soldiers who have been captured by the English. One is going to be set free, and the other is going to be executed. Now, it's the one who's going to be executed who sings the song, and the main verse goes like this. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland for ya. For me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Now explain what I don't need a fight. <laughs> now explain what's going on. He's saying, you take the high road because you'll be alive, and I'll take the low road because I'll be dead. Now in Scottish folklore, it's the fairies who live underground who'll take your spirit home. And because he's a spirit, he'll be home before his friend. Then he laments on the fact that he'll never see his wife again. Now John Gray right here, he was a night watchman in the mid-1850s. Uh, he had a very tough job. Somehow by himself, he'd have to convince groups of up to ten men not to commit a crime. And that was a very tough job for just one man to do. The night watchmen were allowed dogs for protection. Most got really big dogs. John, however, got a tiny Sky Terrier to be his guard dog. Now John, he wanted to be the nice night watchman. He'd go up to groups of men and go, Right lads, settle it down. Now that look at him, They'd look down and see a cute little dog and go, aww, and bend down and pat him. And he called his little dog Bobby, because Bobby was slang for police officer. Now, John and Bobby patrolled the seas together for two years, cleaning up the crime, until John died of tuberculosis. 
Now when John died, they buried him here at Greyfriars Kirk. And little Bobby, who's now a stray dog, found his way into the graveyard and sat on his master's grave. He just wants to be close to him. The first thing the monks do is boot him off, because you can't have dogs in a cemetery. But no matter what the monks did, little Bobby kept finding his way inside. He's just got to be close to his master. Now, James Brown was the local butcher. He's walking through Great Bryce Kirk, sees little Bobby sitting here, and he's cold and hungry. He feels really sorry for Bobby, so every day just after one o'clock, he would feed Bobby scraps from his butchery. So they buried him as Bobby's friend. Now, Bobby does become a big tourist attraction, so the monks start to look after him, and the city council gives him the keys to the city, making him legally a citizen. And that gave him the right to vote, and this is before women could vote. <laughs> now, little Bobby survived almost 14 years after his master's death, but when he died, they couldn't bury him here because it's holy earth. And they say they buried him somewhere near the gates, so they're a bit unsure as to where he's buried. But since his death, there have been a lot of books written about him, three movies based on him, there was, an reference in future, sorry, there was an episode based on him in Futurama, there was also a reference in Family Guy as well. Now, 1981 is when they built the Bobby Memorial Stone at the front of the graveyard. It was 1875 when they built the statue. Now, that's the tale of Greyfriars Bobby.